Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson across America. I'm glad to have you with me today. The phone number, well, I'm not going to give it to you yet because I need you to just sit here and listen to me for a few moments. Uh, To begin with, I want to play this audio from David Schlein. Uh, He is uh, CNN's political director. He was on last night after Liz Cheney lost her election in Wyoming. This is the general sentiment of the media today. I think the Civil War motif on is sort of why she brought up Mar-a-Lago. Mm-hmm. I think she wanted to tie, it sounded like in the speech, um, Donald Trump releasing the names of FBI agents and then the violence or the threat uh, warning that has been uh, put out since uh, the Mar-a-Lago uh, search and seizure of his property. I think she wanted to tie in the real violence we've seen and the threats of violence that we have heard about from the government uh, to this whole notion of this brewing uh, potential uh, civil war. I do think, though, there's she was a truth teller tonight. Like, that's the other thing that Liz Cheney has on her side. She has the truth. She has the truth about the 2020 election. So when she cites these Republican uh, nominees who have won their primaries who deny the truth about the 2020 election, uh, she, she has that on her side. And I think she leaned into sort of being a, a truth teller tonight. Okay, the truth teller. She compared herself to Lincoln. Uh, I, I Can I ask you a favor, please? I just, I need you to give me one favor, one courtesy. Listen to everything I'm about to say instead of changing the channel, turning me off, or sending me hate mail after the first sentence here. I like Liz Cheney. Always have. I like her parents. Don't know her sister, Mary. I like her. Uh, I don't think she's one of the bad guys. Now, no, 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 no. Wait. Just follow along with me here. What I find remarkable, actually, is a lot of people who were Cheney fans suddenly aren't. It's this turn on a dime thing that has happened over time. People who were aren't. People who weren't are. The truth of the matter is many of the people who are mourning the loss of Liz Cheney in Congress are people who wouldn't pee on her if she were on fire, if she were a Republican nominee for president because she's pro-life. She actually is conservative. May not be as conservative as me or you, but she's certainly said right. Wyoming decided Wyoming wanted a representative for Wyoming, not a statesman in Washington, D.C., and so they made a change. Ironically, they've replaced a woman who voted for Donald Trump twice with a woman who was one of the leading never-Trump voices who now says the election was stolen, whether she actually believes it or she's navigating the politics of the day with new rhetoric to try to get elected, I can't say but she will probably be more of a culture warrior for Montana than Liz Cheney has been. Here's why I'm not going to throw Liz Cheney under the bus. As a lot of my friends have. In fact, I got um, attacked last night by some anonymous people on Twitter I've never heard of, of this is why we can't listen to you again because you said she's not a bad person. A lot of my friends, suddenly, they they don't like her. And and here's why I'm not going to hate on Liz Cheney, even as we, over time, have disagreed more and more on stuff. And I think had she been on the January 6th committee and served as a voice for allowing uh, cross-examination and other opinions to prevail and, and have a fair hearing as opposed to this lockstep march with the Democrats... She probably could have salvaged something. Maybe she still would have lost. Having voted for impeachment, probably would have lost. But the reason I'm just, I'm not willing to go there, and and I, I caution you to not go there either with anyone right now in politics, if you can help it, is it's very clear to me we're going through a political realignment in this country. And I've talked about this before, but it's worth dwelling on here with Liz Cheney. When you think about it, uh, the entire Cheney dynasty 
They were uh, legacies of the Republican Party. Dick Cheney got his start working for Don Rumsfeld in, in Nixon's White House. He became a congressman. He became a secretary of defense for George H.W. Bush, leading the first Gulf War. He became the vice president of the United States. He was the conservative in the White House. I know many people who worked with and for Dick Cheney in the Bush White House who said Cheney was instrumental in stopping the Bushies from advancing uh, uh, aggressive governmental policy that conservatives would have hated. And now suddenly uh, Dick Cheney is the forever war monster and so is his daughter. Um, I saw some some guy on the internet say that uh, they started uh, forever wars for profit or some such. Many of the people who have come into the Republican coalition through Trump are people who for a very long time were on the left and have a, an isolationist foreign policy that is deeply unhelpful, I think, to the future of this country. I think many of them will work their way back out of the Republican Party over time. We're going through a political realignment in this country. And the only thing I think I can do is tell you exactly what I think and be honest with you. Uh, try to be mindful of where my views have changed over time because some of you have changed in other ways or you haven't changed on this particular position but I haven't changed on the fact that I've always thought very highly of the Cheney family and of Liz Cheney, even if I've disagreed with her. And I'm not going to smear her, throw her under the bus and, and dance on her grave, even as I think the people of Wyoming had the right to choose someone different. They chose different. And that does not make them bad either. The media wants to use this as a damning indictment on the Republican Party as the party of Trump. The Republican Party is a party that is largely made up of Trump voters, but even that is changing. Keep in mind, after the November election in 2020, Donald Trump, 90% of Republicans said he should run again. Then it went down to 60%. Then it went down to 53% until August 8th of this year when suddenly it was back up to only 56%. It's been dwindling over time. And as Trump fades from the news, his support fades too. And we continue to see a political realignment. I've got friends. And they are friends of mine who are now diametrically opposed to positions they had just five years ago. They've changed. Most of them are willing to be intellectually honest and say yes, and here's why they've changed. Some of them refuse to acknowledge they've changed. I know people on television I've long held in high regard and considered friends, some of whom no longer want to have anything to do with me because they think I'm too Trump friendly. I actually had an email from a listener this, uh, who, who listened to my monologue yesterday on how Republicans, if they can't move on from talking about Trump, should handle it in juxtaposition to Biden. And, and she was upset, said, I, I can't listen to you anymore. Sounds like you're shilling for Trump. And I'm just telling you what I think the GOP should do. I'm trying to give some level of analysis on how you navigate these things. But people are very sensitive these days in large part because we've moved from modernism to postmodernism. Postmodernism is no longer a fact-based society. It is emotionally driven. The policy positions you like tend to be the policy positions that have an emotional appeal to you. And many of the positions that have an emotional appeal to people are the positions that punish the people that those people hate. So you are gravitating towards an on-the-left position. You gravitate towards someone like Trump because he's willing to fight. That's what you hear about Trump all the time. He's willing to fight. Pay no attention to the actual policies or the contradictions or the reversals of fact or truth. It's it's he fights, and we got to stand with him in fights. The left is the same freaking way, and they refuse to acknowledge it. At least I can point it out. The left has an emotional appeal towards policies that they think on the other side. Look at the rapid embrace of drag queen story hour and drag queens across across America. It turns out people on the right don't want their kids exposed to it. They don't like it. And so there's been this sudden emotional embrace of drag queen story hour across America. What was only happening in a few fringe places around the country is now mainstream on the left across America, even inside the military now under the Biden administration, because people on the right don't like it. That's the only reason they're doing this. We're in postmodernism. Everything is emotional. And part of being emotional is you get on social media and you pound your chest and you dance on the grave of the people you've defeated. And then you get mad at people like me for saying, hey, I don't actually hate Liz Cheney. I don't think she's a bad guy. 
Well, in postmodernism, an emotional response has to be accompanied with performance. And a lot of people want to perform on social media. All of this is to say, we're going through a massive, profound political realignment. It's happening on the Democratic side as well. They just don't recognize it. As they move further and further left, you're seeing non-white voters move further and further to the right. It's happening to them. I'm at least aware of it and can see it happening. I have friends of mine who are stalwarts of the conservative movement who now say, what has conservatism done ever for anything? What has conservatism conserved? I see people who were uh, of the left, for example, I was on a panel last month in Nevada, in Las Vegas with Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald is a progressive. He is of the left. He is married to a guy. They have children. They live in Brazil. He's on the left. He doesn't like uh, the national security apparatus of the United States. He and I are fairly diametrically opposed, and suddenly he's embraced by a center-right coalition because he's anti-woke. He doesn't like the wokes, neither do I. On that, we find common agreement. On distrust of the media, we find common ground. And so you're finding people these days who find common ground on the issue of the day, and suddenly they're all friends. And the moment the issue of the day moves to something where they're not suddenly, well, I hate that person, I never liked that person, burn all the pictures of us on stage, I think that's kind of a BS way to operate in life. Be nice to as many people as you can. Be kind and show grace to as many people as you can. You don't have to be friends with all of these people. But the idea that as the nation and and the politics and the political parties turn and evolve and realign that what was then good is now bad, what was then orthodoxy is now heterodoxy, I think is not a healthy way for us to live. I think it's perfectly fine for the people of Wyoming to have moved on. I keep wanting to say Wisconsin. People of Wyoming, they wanted to move on from Liz Cheney. They have every right to do so. In fact, as I said when Liz Cheney was first getting elected, I liked her, I supported her, but I still think it's not healthy in our society that we keep coming back to Bushes, Cheneys, and Clintons. It's not. We, as a nation, should stop having political dynasties evolve around families. Now, the media loves Liz Cheney, and they only love her for one thing. She hates Donald Trump, and so she'll be useful to them. You'll start hearing a lot more about and of Liz Cheney in the coming months because she's very useful to the media. But Liz Cheney hasn't really changed her core conservative convictions. Maybe she will. I don't know. The whole nation seems to be realigning now. Uh, I've got friends who used to be like hardcore conservatives, and now they're these national populist types and embracing unionization and the like. I, I find the whole thing bizarre. I, I have There are a lot of things I've changed my mind on over time, largely as I've gotten older and see the world a little different, but it's just weird to have this wholesale uh, flipping and reversal of ideas and policies over time by people as we politically realign. But there are a lot of people, particularly in the 20s and 30s, who are trying to find their way in politics, who as the older generation begins to retire or die, they sense this political realignment and they're trying to find their footing into it to become the new vanguard of whatever is next. And that uh, it plays out well on social media for a lot of them where they build social media profiles but aren't particularly accomplished in the real world. Liz Cheney may completely evolve. I don't know. But I don't think she's a bad person. But here's the thing. I don't think Wyoming voters are bad for choosing to move on either. Wyoming voters get to make that choice. They made that choice democratically. They went and voted. And they chose someone else. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make them bigots. It doesn't make them haters. It doesn't even make them part of some personality cult of Donald Trump. It makes them, Wyoming voters, ready to move on. And as I don't particularly have any sort of animosity or animus towards Liz Cheney, I certainly don't to Wyoming voters who decided they're ready to chart a course in the future that leaves behind the Bush-Cheney legacy, as much of the Republican Party has been doing. And that really doesn't have anything to do with Donald Trump. He is not a cause of something. He is a symptom of something. Donald Trump is the symptom, the sign, the symbol of an American political realignment that has manifested first very publicly successfully on the right, but it's also happening to the left. And here's my problem. 
It's going to happen on the left. It is happening on the left. We see it with transgenderism. We see it with the wokes. We see it with the defund the police. We see it with the squad. We see it with Antifa and Black Lives Matters and the far left activism and the defund the police and the identity politics. But here's the thing. Many of the people in the media who see this profound shakeup and realignment on the right and are appalled at it can't see that it's happening on the left and will probably not be appalled at it when it does happen because they're further to the left than most people are. And that will just perpetuate further the realignment on the right as it solidifies a non-white voting force with blue collar people and becomes dominant. And the media can't help themselves but go back to the old playbook of screaming racism over all these non-white people becoming more and more Republican. Quick heads up for everybody. Uh, You know, we normally send the show notes out when the show starts, but uh, our email server has been glitchy and um, it's coming. It was sent. It's just hung up in the servers. It'll be to you shortly. If you want to subscribe so you get all the links of all the stuff I'm talking about on the show, uh, you can text the word data to 33777 and you can subscribe to my daily email. A lot of stuff you get, you don't have to pay for. You want the really good stuff. It's just seven bucks a month. Um, including the show notes email that comes out (laughs) or will. Also, that reminds me, that reminds me, I am sending out the pork belly belly burn-in recipe later today. Um, You're going to want to get that. Uh, Recipe, text that word, singular recipe to 33777. You can subscribe. It goes, uh, I've got it, assuming the email server gets fixed by then, which is supposed to be 1.50 p.m. or so, the pork belly burn-in recipe teriyaki style. Oh, it's really good. It's kind of basically like candied bacon. Mm. It's going to be a new favorite. Anyway, it goes out later. Um, I have a small programming note for those of you listening on my flagship station in Atlanta, WSB. I'm doing four hours of radio today. My 3 p.m. hour is just with my WSB audience because uh, the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, uh, wanted to come on. He couldn't make it happen during the show today. And I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Um, I'll see if I can do a fourth hour on WSB. And so I am. Uh, So if you're in Atlanta, stick around. I'll be preempting Hannity and doing a fourth hour. I got an email. A listener emailed me during my last monologue and said, uh, essentially, uh, I'm wrong on something. It's really simple. If you vote for someone who promotes believes in the big lie, it does make you bad. I actually tend to disagree with that for a number of reasons. One, if you know anything about me and this show, I am very firm in my conviction the election was not stolen and that January 6th was a bad thing. But also... I think that if you say it's the big lie, what you are doing is as bad as what the people who think the election is stolen are doing. You are otherizing Americans using the phrase, the big lie, which is derived from Nazism. And you are comparing 70 some odd million Americans as Nazis and you smugly and self-righteously nod along and think that's a very fine thing for you to do and you justify it. And that makes you no better than them if you're going to call it the big lie. It was a democratic talking point to embrace the phrase the big lie and tie the Republicans to the Nazis and they successfully got many members of the media who already hated the Republicans to do that. And I frankly think that's a damning indictment on the character of the people who use the phrase big lie to knowingly, openly, willingly embrace a democratic talking point to compare a lot of good, hardworking Americans to Nazis because they think the election was stolen. There are some terrible people out there who are hoodwinking Americans about a stolen election, but there are some people who just fell into believing it, and that doesn't make them Nazis, and you should be ashamed of yourself for thinking it does. Hi there, it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425, should you wish to be a part of this here program. Um, Glad to have you with me. Uh, I will open the phone lines. We will. I didn't want to. I wanted to get through all the Liz Cheney stuff. Um, I, I do want to talk a little bit further about something I and mean, kind of go off, I guess, to some degree on what I had intended to talk about right now. I can get to it later. I think this is more important. 
Um, there is a lot of contempt for people out there. Um, it is just, um, so hang on a second. All right. So the, the guy heard me, um, in someone who knowingly willfully maintains that Trump won the election doesn't deserve to be elected to anything. I'm not a lefty and was using a term in general use without any hint of reference to Nazism. Total red herring. Actually, no, Steve, you clearly aren't a smart person. I'm sorry. You're apparently listening right now. So I, I need to address this to Steve, who's listening, who says that anyone who says the election was stolen, they're a bad person. Steve, you clearly aren't a bright person. I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but apparently it's limited because it is actually a documented fact that the reason Democrats encourage the media to start referring to the stolen election nonsense as a big lie is because the Nazis blaming Jews for everything was called the big lie. It's been documented. It has been well researched. It has even been openly admitted by Democrats. So you may not realize you have been led down this path, but that kind of is the point, Steve. You're holding yourself to a higher pattern and a higher status than people who have been bought into the stolen election stuff, some of whom are running for office. And they're not bad people. They believe it, just like you believe you're not making a reference to Nazism, when in fact the whole point of the media embracing the phrase big lie that you now use and are absolutely absolutely oblivious to how you're using it is because it tied it to the Nazis. It's exactly the point. Don't think of yourself as better than other people because, I mean, you clearly don't even realize you're using the phrase big lie because it's been repeated so much in the media. And the whole point of the media embracing the phrase big lie was willfully as a democratic talking point to tie the GOP to the Nazis. So spare me your outrage, Steve. I mean, you've been used clearly. Not my fault. Move on. But that gets to the point. I'm not, okay, I, I shouldn't say I'm not willing to. There are some people, and on this, Steve and I would find common ground. There are some people who I think uh, willfully and maliciously are toying with people to whip them into a frenzy, to believe the election was stolen, and to uh, essentially undermine our democracy for their own gain. There are people out there who are doing that. Uh, I, I think what Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani and Mike Lindell and them did, uh, I think the, the ongoing um, efforts to undermine, for example, the, um, the stolen election uh, or, or to undermine voter machines around the country and claim that the voter machines threw stuff to... Um, to Joe Biden, I, I think it's deeply malicious stuff. And a lot of people have bought into it. And look what happened in Georgia. Two Democrats got elected to the U.S. Senate because Republicans were so convinced the election was going to be stolen that they stayed home. Now, interestingly enough, Democrats began running campaign ads in Georgia and bought billboards around Georgia that actually advocated the message. Instead, it's going to be stolen. Stay home. Democrats, though, what I find very interesting is they're willing to go out and fund the stolen election candidates. Democrats have funded a number of Republican candidates around the nation who believe the election was stolen. In fact, in Michigan, against Peter Meyer, John Gibbs, Democrats spent more for John Gibbs than John Gibbs spent for himself to get him the Republican nomination. In Pennsylvania, Democrats spent more money to get Doug Mastriano, the Republican nomination for governor, than Doug Mastriano spent on himself. And you will notice the Democrats were fine funding these candidates. These candidates, they decided, were part of this big lie tying them to Nazism, using the phrase big lie, and they were perfectly fine to do it. Why? Because the media believes that Republicans are terrible people. And the media has always believed Republicans are terrible people. And the media will use anything possibly, possible, hopeful, willingly, to sabotage, destroy, and smear anyone on the right. 
this is part of the problem that we have to navigate. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who have bought into the idea the election was stolen, and I don't think it was. But I'm not going to condemn those people because other people have said so. But here's the thing. There are candidates out there who do not believe it. And yet, they use rhetoric that suggests they do. And I'm not willing to condemn those people. And I'm not willing to condemn them for this. Same reason on the Liz Cheney stuff. Everybody's finding their way in this realignment of American politics. Everybody's getting very dogmatic about one thing or another. Everybody's getting very dogmatic about what they do or do not believe. Everyone is getting very dogmatic about this one issue is my one issue. And if you don't agree with me on this, you're a bad person. And so you got a lot of politicians on both sides of the aisle trying to navigate their way through this political realignment in the country. And on top of that, you have a media that has clearly gone all in on the left and clearly gone all in on um, deep destruction of anything conservative, culturally, economically, or otherwise. They hate Republicans. They hate conservatives. They hate Trump voters. They hate flyover country. They're not willing to give them a fair hearing. And so you've got a lot of politicians on the right who are like, how do I navigate this? And many of them are navigating it by sounding as Trumpy as they possibly can to do it. Now, listen, politicians of all stripes lie, but for some reason, everyone wants to give everyone a pass except the people who are like, well, I think there were, I have deep doubts about the election. You know, I got deep doubts about parts of the election as well. I don't think it was stolen, but I was an elections lawyer. I've never seen a flawless election. There are always problems. The question is, can you meet the legal standard to throw throw it out? And very rarely can you, particularly at a national level. I don't think the election was stolen, but I think there were problems. So you have people who try to navigate it. And the media, of course, anyone who questions the election at all is supposedly an election denier. And when you have people so willing to embrace the phrase big lie and are too ignorant to even know where it comes from or why they're using it, uh, you can't expect those people to be able to nuance between someone who calls into doubt election security with someone who thinks the election was stolen. There actually is a pretty big difference between the two. But nobody wants to nuance anymore. Everybody wants to perform. Everyone wants to perform. Everyone wants to have an emotional response these days. It's not enough to state the facts anymore. It's got to be emotionally driven. It's got to be storytelling to some degree. It's got to make people feel happy and whatnot, Uh, as opposed to just telling people what's going on in the country. You're not allowed to tell people what's going on in the country anymore. You're just not. Uh, you gotta, you got to connect to just one side and tell them exactly what they want to hear. And there are a lot of people who don't necessarily agree with it, and they're trying to nuance it. And all I'm trying to do is tell you what I think. And if you don't like me, there are plenty of other voices out there. You can go here to tell you exactly what you think and what you believe. And I think you are in for a world of hurt if you just embrace people who tell you exactly what you think and, and never tell you what's actually going on in the world. I call me old-fashioned that way. I used to think they're, they're actually, you know, if you just tell people the truth, people like it. No, no, no. Um, people want to be told their truth now, not the truth, their truth. The media, however, doesn't want to tell you the truth. The media wants to tell you the Democrats' truth. And the Democrats' truth is that boys can become girls and girls can become boys. And the Democrats' truth is that anyone who has any questions at all about election integrity is an election denier. And the Democrats' truth is that Republicans are Nazis, but we won't call them Nazis. We'll say they're using the big lie and smart people will be able to deduce what we're saying and dumb people will just embrace it and use the phrase big lie. So how do Republicans navigate in this? You know, there was a series of stories last week I didn't get to about uh, Republican candidates around the country now no longer talking to the mainstream media. Why would you? Why would you talk to the mainstream media if you're a Republican candidate? They're on the Democratic side now, plain as day. There are some very fair reporters out there across networks, but by and large, overwhelmingly, the media is all in on the left. Look at how quickly reporters across America pushed back on Donald Trump's claim yesterday that the FBI had taken his passport. Multiple reporters, including Nora O'Donnell from CBS News, says, no, 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 the FBI says they don't have his passport. 
But actually, the FBI had taken his passport. They just gave it to another agency when they realized they had it so that agency could get it back to the president. But they took it. Donald Trump was not telling a lie. But the media circled the lies. Of course, Donald Trump's telling a lie. Donald Trump himself can't get a fair hearing in the media. I'm a Trump critic, and I recognize that Donald Trump can't get a fair hearing in the press. And I get attacked by people for trying to give him a fair hearing. I can't believe you're shilling for Donald Trump now. I'm not. I'm trying to tell you the truth as best I can, and not my truth or your truth, but what the hell is actually happening in this country so you could make up your mind. It's really hard to navigate the landmines of American politics these days as people have become so emotionally driven. Now, why have people become emotionally driven? That's the big question. And sure, we can say, well, it's postmodernism, and we've moved into postmodern times, and people, no, 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 Nothing happens. And I have a personal theory on why these things have happened. My personal theory is we've had a really good run of it since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Cold War. Yes, we had 9-11, and it was bad. And yes, we had war on terror, and we had lots of dead servicemen Many people lost loved ones at war. But also, we had a massive economic boon. We had America leading the war. We had no real major outside global superpower threats. And so we could look inward. And looking inward, we kind of got bored. And the things that made us excited were the things that gave us an emotional impulse. And for a lot of people over time, that became politics. Politics is blood sport. We're kind of back to the Roman era, aren't we? Instead of having Colosseum fights now, we have UFC fights. And the Romans were a very litigious, emotional society. Uh, Romans had to perform in the streets to show people their real convictions. You know, in the Bible, all that stuff about don't sue other people and stuff, you know, that that's actually a response to Roman society. Roman society was highly litigious, and essentially what Paul was telling people uh, in Scripture was don't act like those people. Be grounded in truth. The Roman society of the day was very, what we would call postmodern now. It's an ancient society, but had a lot of postmodernism. It was everything was based on the emotional appeal of something. Uh, and everyone was very quick to embrace the new idea, not the old idea. Uh, and, and essentially, Paul makes this argument that, that in fact, um, uh, the, the, the monotheistic God of Israel was a very old idea, uh, even if in news packaging. And he called on the Christians of the day to stop essentially being so emotional that you, you've essentially got an evidence-based religion. Stop being so emotional. Stop buying into mythologies. Uh, and we're back to that in this day and age. We had a very good run of it. We had a very comfortable time. A lot of people made a lot of money. And even people who didn't got to leave, live a comfortable existence and they got bored with society and they no longer had to worry and they turned to emotional, uh, everything emotional. And so they made politics blood sport to get emotional excitement out of it as well. And I think that has a lot to do with where we are as society. And I don't think that's going to change, by the way, for a very long time until some outward external threat weighs against us and everybody's got to wake up, grow up, and realize that uh, we can't all have emotional excitement in every aspect of our life. There's a real world out there and real truth and how to assess it actually matters. I did not mean to go off on this reservation today, but here we have it. All right, let's move on. First, before I do, Patriot Mobile, you need to go use them as your cell phone provider. Why? Because they're actually committed to the conservative cause, pretty significantly so. They give a portion of their profits to the conservative movement. And in so doing, they grow the conservative movement. So the the Second Amendment movement, the pro-life movement, veterans and first responders, conservative candidates even, they take a portion of their profits that they get by you doing business with them and they grow the movement. You get guaranteed great service. They're 100% U.S. based. They're Christian conservatives. They want your business, you get free activation by going to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K, or you can call them, 100% U.S.-based customer service, 972-PATRIOT, tell them Eric sent you, you get free activation. Hello there, it is Eric Erickson here. Yes, this actually is important because I have made sure to write this down. I went back through, made sure I remembered all the steps at uh, sometime around 150 or so today, 
I'm going to send out the pork belly burnt end recipe. Uh, now, what is if you pork belly is basically uncured slab that bacon comes from? It's just a part of a pig, and it is tasty. And delicious. I've never actually made burnt ends with it before. My buddy Joe. Uh, over in Louisiana, text me. He's like, what? Are you kidding me? You've never made burn ins with pork belly. It's better than brisket. I got to say, I think it might be better than the brisket. And it only takes three and a half hours on a smoker. Now, I got a Rectech. Um, I like Rectech better than Traeger for a number of reasons. I've got a big green egg. Spare me. I realize people love their big green eggs. I love my big green egg. I don't use it anymore. Why? Because I got a Rectech. I can turn it on with my phone, get it up to temperature, and it delivers fantastic results. I loved my egg for a decade, even after it burnt off my eyebrows. <laughs> okay, true story, as an aside, before I get on this. So I was on CNN for a couple of years before I moved over to Fox, and I got my first big paycheck from CNN. I was making more money than I ever made in my life. TV play, paid very well. I was like, I'm going to buy a big green egg. And I went out and got a large big green egg. And the very first day, I decided to fire it up. The next day, I was going to CNN up in, in New York or Washington for the State of the Union. And so I, I fired up the Big Green Egg. I was going to grill burgers. And I had to burp it. So what this is, is it gets really hot, and it'll have a big flame come out. If you don't raise the lid, get a little oxygen, lower it down, and then you raise it again. So I did. Well, didn't matter. Still got that. I was fine. No big deal got the hamburgers off the big green egg, took them inside, very excited, first time on the big green egg. I could smell burnt hair. And I realized, oh, I, that fireball took off the, the hair on, on uh, my fingers and, and my hands. I didn't have any hair there anymore. Got into the kitchen. My wife says, oh, my God, your eyebrows. I dropped the hamburgers, and I went into the bathroom, and I had no eyebrows. In fact, the very front of my hair was gone as well. Everything was just curled up, shriveled. Uh, and I had to be on TV. It was my first time on CNN. It was a State of the Union address. I was going to be in Washington, D.C. with Wolf Blitzer and Gloria Borger and Anderson Cooper and John King and all of them. And, and I would be the conservative going after Obama, and I had no eyebrows. Only time the woman in the makeup room said she ever had to put fake eyebrows on a dude. <laughs> True story. I love my big green egg, but now I love my Rectech um, because I can turn it on right here in studio with my phone, get it precisely to the temperature I want, and it's going to hold that temperature, and it is wonderful. I love my Rectech. Uh, I like it better than a Traeger uh, for a lot of reasons, but all of that to say, this pork belly burn-in recipe, it's really good. I got it off the internet, credit to Meat Therapy, the account on Instagram where I got it from. Um, if you want the recipe, text the word recipe, singular, not plural, recipe with an E on the end to 33777. I'll send you back the link. You can subscribe for free. If you want to do the paid subscription, it just helps me buy the ingredients to do the recipes. But otherwise, you can do it for free. Recipe to 33777. We'll be back with more news. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.